It'll take three years. This is just <laughs> honest to goodness. Three years of homeschooling before you go, huh, I don't care what the public schools are doing. <laughs> this is my homeschool. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rock Podcast. I'm back today with my good friend, Christy Clover, and we're talking about how to homeschool. Um, if you listen to Monday's episode, you know that you always want to start with your foundation. We talked about Ecclesiastes 12, 13, the end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. You guys, that's it. The most important thing, fear God, keep his commandments. And boom, you're done. That's all you need to know. But no, it's not. We will we will continue to help you um, to navigate through this homeschooling thing um, because it's important. We need to know what to do with our kids. Now we've got them in our homes and now what? So that's the question we're answering. Now what? What do we do? How do we do this? And Christy is here to help us with that because she is an expert. You said you've been homeschooling for somewhere around 15 years, right, Christy? Yep, about 15 years. Graduated two yeah. kids so far. So we're doing so it. So cool. <laughs> Yay! It's Yay. working, and, so. and they're they're still functional adults, which they is amazing. Full time jobs. My oldest is yeah. married. I didn't even think I mentioned oh. that on the Monday's episode. Yeah, my oldest. Yeah, is married. I know. I am a that's mother. So crazy. Mom. So oh, that's, I'll tell you, that's busy. Adding that that sixth child that was the easiest yeah. thing ever. No morning sickness, just a really right? happy day, <laughs> and then voila, I have another addition to our family. It's awesome. That's so cool. I love that. I look forward to getting to that point. We're getting there quickly. Brooklyn's so going to be awesome. a senior this year. And, oh man. Oh, I know yeah. it's, it's so fast. It is so fast. We will it officially have a middle schooler and a high school, you know, high schooler who's almost done with high school. And so, wow. yeah, I know I was looking at my calendar the other day and, um, the co-op that we're doing this year with both my girls they have a graduation planning meeting and I was like, oh, oh like I have to coming. get a meeting to plan her graduation. It's just so surreal. Um, and oh, yeah. it's weird. Like I remember when I was pregnant with her, this was probably about two weeks before she was born and just thinking like how surreal it was. Like she's, she's almost here. Like yeah. she's almost going to be on this earth out of my body and how bizarre that, that reality was. And so getting to this next phase of, mm of life. I mean, it, cause it really is the next big phase. Like she's going to be is. an adult now. Yeah. Um, it's bizarre. And I'm so thankful that the Lord's given us all these years to homeschool and to be able to build a relationship with her and with my youngest daughter. Right. I mean, I'm so, so very grateful for that. So, um, mm. which, which on a quick note, I've said this, I think before on the podcast, but I'm going to go back to something you talked about on Monday. You yeah. talked about how oftentimes parents will say, you know, Oh, just the thought of being with their kids all day and the kids being with them and them being with each other. And and one of the things I've realized is that oftentimes parents who don't homeschool, they think that they don't want to be with their kids or can't be with their kids because their kids will drive them crazy. The reason their kids drive them crazy is because they're not the ones raising them. Mm -hmm. Someone else is raising them with their own morals Amen. and standards and values and beliefs. And not that your kids are going to be perfect if they're in your home, but when you're raising them your way, it's a very different outcome usually than when someone else is raising them and you have them in the evenings and on the weekends and on spring break and, and in the summertime. And then you think, well, I don't really like this kid. I don't like the way they act. Take them in, take, take on that role of full-time parenting, not part-time parenting and see how things change. Um, I think people will be really surprised to see what the Lord does and how he can work through you in your, your kid's life. So anyway, we're going to so get back it. into how to homeschool. But before we do, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com. They will teach your kids math for you so that you don't have to teach it yourself. They are amazing. ctcmath.com, and you can try them out for free. ctcmath.com. Well, if you didn't download yet your uh, Schoolhouse Rocked podcast notes, um, you can download that and take notes as we talk this week through how to homeschool. So in the last episode, Christy, on Monday, you talked about you have on your website, it's a homeschool webinar. Um, it's the how to homeschool webinar. It's kind of a crash course. Yeah. Um, I want to go through that and I want to do like the crash, crash course, the crash course of the crash course. Can we do the crash course. <laughs> we can do the crash course of the crash course. Yes. Yeah. So let's, <laughs> if you need let's more help, continue. go to the crash course. <laughs> right. Right. If you need further explanation right. of these things, um, we, we will put a link to that from Christy's website as well. But um, we talked about setting that foundation. We talked about HSLDA and, and knowing what your state laws are and really knowing the why of homeschooling, what would be the next thing that parents uh, need to consider when homeschooling? You know, here's the thing is that I'm going to speak to 
the families. Okay, so if you are pulling your kid out of school, so you already have kids in school, and now you're going to be homeschooling them at home. Honestly, one of the biggest recommendations I have, and it was something that was told to me when we first started um, homeschooling, is we pulled my, it was a kindergartner and a first grader out of school, is you need to spend at least a good month, if not just your first year of time, just getting back to being a family and what that looks like, because you're changing the dynamics. And so yeah. sometimes you don't even need to homeschool with curriculum. And that blows people's mind. I mean, math is one of those things like math and like phonics, like learning to read and math are two things that are helpful to have some curriculum. But there's so many ways to learn that's kind of a little unschooling. So you might be if you're one of those parents, you're like, yeah, that's all nice and pretty, Christy, but I need curriculum. Then there's yeah. There is curriculum out there, but I just want people to know that you can homeschool and kind of do it the easy way. You can study science by looking out and seeing what the weather is, track the weather, see what that looks like, compare the weather to your area to other areas. That's learning science. You know, maybe go to the library, check out some books on, on weather. You know, you can pick up a rock and see what's underneath it and study that. You know, it, I we we tend to kind of study what's around us. So we have hummingbirds that are constantly building nests in our yard. So we did a whole little unit study on um, hummingbirds. And for those of you that I just dropped a word that is a homeschoolies word, um, unit studies, that's simply <laughs> taking a subject and building um, curriculum around that. So, and, and not like official curriculum, but you're taking something like a hummingbird and I'm going to find, you know, some books about hummingbirds. I'm going to learn science, you know, Maybe there's not so much history around hummingbirds, but sometimes there is. You'd be surprised. Like with cats, you can study the history of cats in Egypt, cats in other countries. So there's so many fun ways to really learn how to learn. And that would be my encouragement to families is don't feel bogged down by all of the choices that you have. And sometimes that is just what you need. You need a gentle start open your Bible, maybe get, yeah. um, there's some great missionary books out there. Um, oh, YWAM yeah. has a whole series of missionary books that we really enjoy. One of my favorite books is <laughs> about to bl blank on it. Um, oh, I need to go get it. It's hero, hero tales. That's the name of it. Um, oh, hero okay. tales. And it's, it's just snippets of different missionary lives. And they also have like a character study on there. So when you learn about missionaries, you can learn about the countries that they're from, you know, what, what are some of the unique things that are happening there? What are some cultures and you know customs of those things? Find them on a map. You know, yeah. so there's so many ways. When you start homeschooling, you really learn how to make it a lifestyle. So yeah. that's my encouragement to those who are pulling their kids out. If you're pulling your kids out of high school, then um, you know, or they're, you're pulling them out and starting into high school, you do need to be more deliberate. I would say like second, third grade down, you can totally be relaxed about your start for homeschooling. Just stick yeah. to the basics, have fun with it. Um, but then if you're homeschooling, like even junior high to high school, you can definitely, you know, because you're especially for high school, you're building a transcript. And so that's just, it, right. I mean, as scary as it might sound, you are calling up HSLDA, looking on their website, finding out. And again, HSLDA is Homeschool Legal Defense Association. There are mm -hmm. lawyers in the homeschooling realm, and um, they'll show you exactly what's required in your state law to graduate your child. And it will blow your mind. It will blow your mind. Yeah. Like, because we got used, to, I was just sharing with this with someone um, today at uh, Coffee that. You know, when we go through high school, we think, oh, four years of English, four years of science, four years of math. And it's shocking that in California, at least, it's like two to three years of English, two years of math, two years of science, and they graduate. I mean, it is crazy um, sure. to see what's required in your state. And so that's all you're paying attention to is what's required and then have fun with it. And right. another important part of starting off is what are your kids interested in and learn about that and that is going to spark their interest so when i first told the kids because we were you know a few weeks into the school and they're having fun at recess and all that and so like my oldest was like more time to read okay i'll do i'll let's homeschool i can read all day yeah. and then my <laughs> second at the time he was like but i just want to play soccer all day like can i do mm. that and then i was like well no we can't do soccer all day we can pl play more soccer than you can do at school but he was so cute. So I'm like, so what do you think? He's like, 
can we do a volcano? And I was like, absolutely. We are going to build a volcano. (laughs) So we ended up doing this cute little unit study on Hawaii. So we learned about Hawaiian culture. We happened to have a a Hawaii vacation that we were tying it into. So we went to Hawaii. Um, We took microscopes in Hawaii and learned about the sun and how intense it is. I brought chocolate. And I learned, this is like this cute little science project I read about. And I learned you should always bring extra chocolate for your children to eat because oh. <laughs> as we were burning, I was showing like how intense the sun is when it goes through the microscope yeah. and it burned the chocolate. And they're like, that's cool, but can we eat it? I'm like, right. sorry. So ne- so bring extra chocolate. That's that's my hack for you. And for but mom then, too. <laughs> and yes, that's a must. So homeschooling and chocolate go very closely yeah, together. Yes. <laughs> But no, just figure out what your kids are passionate about and what they're interested yeah. in learning. We did, because I had little boys at the start of our homeschool journey. So we did nights. And so we studied the medieval mm. period and we learned about all these crazy things. And we did Egypt because Egypt's a fun thing to learn about with boys. And so just find yeah. what they're interested in. And as you're building, when you go into high school, what's amazing is how you know it takes, what is it like however many thousand of hours to become an expert at something. We have that opportunity to do that in our homeschools because our kids have more time. We're not spending all of the changing class periods, changing teacher time. You know, we're in there, we get it done. We're usually done by lunch. Uh, My high schoolers go a little bit beyond lunch um, typically, but um, my oldest has a passion for reading and for writing. And so I just let him go in that area. We centered a lot of his homeschooling around writing. He wrote two novels by the time he was 17. Um, He didn't publish them, but he wrote two novels, which is a huge undertaking. Then my second, who we graduated, he had a real passion and infinity and and just an inspiration with photography. And so he was always ready for it. It rained. He was like out the door with his camera. He wanted to catch like the dew drops and the raindrops falling off the flowers. And and so we just were able to really get him involved in learning about that. Now he's a professional photographer. And my oldest son is working and he's doing copy editing um, with his job. And so... It's just so cool to see how you can really look for these strengths. You can build up the yeah. weaknesses, but look for those strengths and pour into them and just let them flourish. And that's something that you can't do in other things. So I'm hoping yeah. that by saying all that, like it will really encourage people that you have to take off these like, well, what are they learning in public school? Well, I need my homeschool to look like the public school. Right. This is your school. And, and honestly, we can say that so we're blue in the face. It'll take three years. This is just <laughs> honest to goodness. Three years of homeschooling before you go, huh, I don't care what the public schools are doing. <laughs> this is my yeah. homeschool. And it, it's fine. You know, like just breathe a little, but just keep yeah. reminding yourself that Christine Yvette told you that this is your homeschool and you can design it the way you want to. It doesn't need to look like right. the public school system. So yeah, yeah. I love so the that's three years. That's so funny. It's, it's and true. I think you're spot on because I, I that's about how long it took me to realize, oh, OK, so this is not going to look like my schedule that looked like the public school schedule. And yeah. it, and it was so frustrating because I always felt like I was failing my kids and like I was failing myself and I just was doing it all wrong. And so it, yeah, it took about that long. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. Learn, learn it before you d- just don't do the oh, three yeah. years, just skip the three years of trying to replicate regular traditional school. Um, and do it the way that works best for your family. So we're going to talk more about this. We'll be right back. We're going to take a quick break. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Christy. Um, Christy, you've got five kids and you have a wide range. How old is, so your oldest is how old and your youngest is how old? 21 down to nine. Actually, well, okay. and by the time this airs, she'll be 10. So that will give her some okay. credit there. So she's going to be like, mom, oh. I'm 10. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not nine give anymore. Credit where credit is due. Right. Yeah. So we have 11 year gap. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially when you get into those double digits. I mean, you got to give her the I double know. digits. So I that know. is so My important. baby oh. is going to have double digits. I know. Oh, I'm, Christy. I'm, oh man. <sighs> breathing through oh, that. Oh, it's okay. Deep breath. Deep yeah, breath. I know. So you've got Crazy. an 11 year age gap with mm-hmm. your kids. It, it's the question, of course, that everybody asks, you know, how do you homeschool with all, I mean, that's a big range of yeah. ages and different grades and different levels for everything. So tell us what your typical homeschool day looks like. 
Well, my typical homeschool day now looks a little bit different because everyone is in our homeschool. So it's a little easier with everyone homeschooling and everyone mm -hmm. is a reader now. So I've kind of entered into that sweet spot where we have all, all readers. Because once you have readers, it actually does get a lot easier. So I always tell people that mm -hmm. it's when you have the pre-readers, it's a little more complicated. So the number one thing is to whether you, because I've homeschooled through it all. So we had, we started homeschooling with two kids in kindergarten and first grade. And I had a toddler, which is honestly one of the hardest parts of homeschooling is working around your toddlers. So yeah. um, babies, you can totally work around their schedule because their schedule is kind of what you put them on. But toddlers right. are like, why aren't we playing? We're supposed to be playing. So right. my number one recommendation, if you are homeschooling um, with young kids alongside of your, your school age kids, um, is to have a game plan for those kids. Don't just think, oh, I'm planning my curriculum. You need to plan your curriculum mm -hmm. or plan what you're doing for them, your, your school age kids, but then also have a game plan for fun. You know, let them be part of your homeschool. Around two and a half, they're like, school is fun because you're giving them yeah. coloring books. You're giving them, I gave them, I would make copies of what I was doing with the older boys and they were just scribbling nice. all over it. And they're like, yeah, we got this. Um, so yeah, so that is, um, my recommendation there. And I actually, part of my how to homeschool um, webinar and part of my homeschool organization course, both of those have a whole section just about how to juggle that. How do you homeschool and you have big kids and little kids in the house? Because it's mm -hmm. really important. It is a juggling act and it is difficult, but it's totally doable. I just want to encourage you that it's totally doable. And so I have yeah. a lot of very specific tips for that. Um, but my typical schedule now, as it kind of always is, is that I try to divide up their work between work that needs to be done with mom and work that they can do independently. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's kind of a combo. So I might have to like introduce a sheet. So I might be talking through like a, a grammar worksheet or a math page and kind of giving them some information about how they're going to be doing this. And then they can do the rest on their own. Um, so penmanship is pretty much always on their own. So they save all of those for either when I'm working with another sibling or um, for later on in the day. And I say that because it helps with making kids focus. So by the time we hit lunch, you know, if, if they have had a focus day and they need more help, yes, of course I help them. But sure. they just know that if that the work that requires my help needs to be done before lunch. So morning time, I'm 100% there. I'm, you know, switching off between kids. So I'm having them do some of the independent work while I work with another. And then we switch mm -hmm. off um, and kind of trying to figure it out. Most of my time is usually with my, my younger learners and my older kids all learn kind of, they start learning how to organize themselves and how to structure their days. Um, that's mm -hmm. just part of the rhythm that I try to teach them and it teaches them independence um, as well. But um, that's really what I try to do because we'll also have those kids who like, will just not get to their work and will find every excuse not to do their work. So it was helpful yeah. <laughs> for me to say, well, you know, buddy, like we, we need to have, make sure that we have this done earlier. So I'll probably give them a little help in the afternoon, but it'll be like tomorrow. And I'll give little reminders for that child. Sometimes the ones that tend to kind of put it off is like, okay, yeah. remember like I, mommy's going to go run some errands later this afternoon. So if you need me and you need my help, then this is what we do. And uh, my next bit of information between like the mornings and the afternoons and, you know, dividing up like what is the mom time stuff and the independent stuff. And again, that's why high school sometimes will go later because they're, they're doing mostly independent at that time. Sure. Um, but also just helping them to kind of, you know, we do our, you know, we all have this stuff. I don't know like, if you're this way, but like, I find that there's some subjects I don't get to. And so I move those up front. So if I'm not getting to writing, then guess what our very first subject is of the day is going to be writing because I'm fresh in the morning. My kids are fresh in the morning um, yeah. and that really helps us. And so I try to move the things that by the end of the day, it's the subjects and it's the things that I'm like, I'm tired. Like I'm ready to be, I mean, I'm the whiny kid. Like I'm the one I'm right, like, right. I'm done. Are we done yet? Like and the kids are like, no mom. <laughs> you know, so I find that like, I need that extra motivation because like we're doing our read alouds up front. Um, but really yeah. looking at how you can structure things. And you know what? One of the things we did when we had like, especially babies that weren't sleeping well, I was trying to do sleep training and homeschooling and all of the things. And my husband traveled 
for like 20 years of our marriage. Um, oh, wow. So most of my homeschooling of my older boys, he was on the road. Um, so yeah. it was it was me and five kids. And so we had to juggle that. And um, so what I found is oftentimes when the babies are going to bed at like 7.30, 8 o'clock, then I'm doing a read aloud or I'm doing our Bible time at that time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. some, there are some times in some seasons of our lives when I would just kind of pick some things to do in the evening uh, yeah. because it was just easier to do it then. So yeah. that's, those yeah. are a few of my little tips for kind of routines. Um, but you don't yeah. need to have, and I do say routines. I try to tell people, please don't try to schedule your whole year into a teacher planner because you're yeah, just going to have right. a mountain of eraser dust. Um, and so and that's one of the things that I try to teach in my homeschool organization course is really how to strip that from your mind. Because that's the first thing I did when we started right. homeschooling. I bought a teacher planner because I'm like, well, yeah, that's me what too. teachers at do. Target, which <laughs> yeah. I'd never buy anything at Target now, but I yeah. did 13 years ago. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, you just end up erasing. I don't think I made it more than a week into it when I was erasing right. and drawing arrows and trying to like figure out how to put tabs right. on it to know where in the world I was. And so right. I really try to teach people in my organization course how to take things by week, how to divide it out using the table of contents. Um, so there's lots of strategy to really simplify. And yeah. um, and especially for you as the parent, um, because we can really drive ourselves insane when we're trying to plan out, you know, as some states require 180 days. We're like, that's 180 right. days of planning please get that off yeah. your brain. Like yes, that is yeah. so much more complicated than looking at 36 weeks or 34, right. depending upon your state. So yeah. um, that's really how I try to, I try to sim simplify things. And what I've learned later in life, and actually I've learned this about myself through homeschooling is that I actually um, have ADD, a little bit of ADHD, hyperactive. Uh -huh. My mind's <laughs> always going. Um, so that's, that's my H is my, my brain it makes me creative, makes me be able to do interviews like this on the fly. But, um, I'm also easily distracted. Yeah, and what I've learned too. is if things aren't simple, my brain literally puts up a strike sign. They're like, mm -hmm. my brain's just like, no, no, yeah. you think that you want to do that, but we're not doing that. And I cannot get myself to do it unless I have figured out the simplest way. And then my brain's like, okay, I can do this. So I think yeah. that's what's really unique is that I have really had to learn how to be efficient in all that I do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm exactly the same way. And it definitely works for me. I, I'm pretty sure we answered a question similar to this on a Q&A that we did recently with Abby. And mm. we talked about uh, planning. And one of the things that I said was, I learned this years ago, was to get a notebook, just a spiral bound notebook. And each day, and you could do it by the week if you really wanted to, if that makes mm -hmm. you feel better. Um, but each day, just write down what the next thing is that your kids mm -hmm. have to do. So each kid has their own spiral bound notebook, write down their checklist. My girls like checklists um, and I like checklists. It just makes me feel accomplished. And there's that satisfaction in checking off the thing that you've oh, done. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's so much easier to do it that way. Um, mm -hmm. But you do have to kind of plan out, you know, here's our course of action. What's our goal? And I think it's important to know what our goal is for the end of that year. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit more about that. And I want to talk about curriculum um, yeah. tomorrow as well. So we're out of time for today, but we are going to come back. We're going to come back tomorrow. Christy's going to give us more pointers. We're going to talk more about this. Um, you guys, thank you for listening. You are such a blessing. Make sure you stay till the end to hear a clip about what's coming up next um, on the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. Um, and also, if you are watching, you see my t-shirt. It says, love, joy, peace. Let's see if I can move this way. Love, joy, peace. Um, this is one of our Schoolhouse Rocked t-shirts. This is a great way to support the Schoolhouse Rocked ministry. And we'll put a link to these. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, you'll see down underneath our YouTube video, a link to our store. And there's all kinds of um, fun t-shirts and colors and things. We've got bags and mugs and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, that's that's the beauty of life today, right? Um, the internet that is that you can create these cool things. And then they just throw it on something that is cool and useful for a homeschool mom and she can buy it and walk around with, you know, the cool Schoolhouse Rock t-shirt. So um, that is a great way to support us. If you would like to support the ministry of Schoolhouse Rocked, you can always go to our website, schoolhouserocked.com. And everything for our ministry is there, schoolhouserocked.com. You can donate, you can watch the movie, you can download our homeschool quick start guide um, from there. Um, we've got lots of resources on there. And then, of course, we'll link to Christy's website as well, christyclover.com. You guys, thank you for listening. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye. 
Education is discipleship, and this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. When your child's getting frustrated, so when you feel the tension rising, they're getting frustrated, oftentimes it's because you're going too hard too fast. So it's time to hit the pause button. Who cares what you've had planned? Like for people going through my course, I'm like, I don't care what's in the crate because I teach people a crate system. Um, you're gonna stop right there and you're gonna give your kids a break and let's make sure that they have some fundamentals. All of my kids have gone through this with uh, math in particular. There just comes a point where they're learning, 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 and then they're just frustrated. And what it usually comes down to is that they don't have their fundamentals down. 